hot and cold packs. So here we go. We're going to learn a little bit today about endothermic and exothermic reactions. Um, to get it started off, I want you to think for a moment, what are some of the things that you experience in your everyday life that either give off heat or absorb heat? Now, as you're thinking about this, I want you to also think, are these physical changes or are they chemical changes? Because there are examples of physical changes that give off energy or take in energy. And there's also chemical changes that do both. So um, hopefully by the end of this um, unit on thermochemistry, you can answer these questions. All right. So our objective today is to define endothermic and exothermic. Um, we've got an example of an endothermic reaction on the right the ice cubes melting, and on the left, exothermic, a match burning is a good example of exothermic. So what is the difference? Well, when a system absorbs energy from the surroundings, it's called endothermic. And when a system releases energy to the surroundings, it's called exothermic. So what does that really mean? Well, first thing we need to do is think about what the system and surroundings mean. All right, so in this the systems in a chemical reaction are the molecules that are undergoing the change. Now, the water molecules in the container, um, the hand that's holding the beaker, the air surrounding them, even the thermometer that's monitoring the temperature, all of those things are all part of the surroundings. So systems and surroundings are two separate things. The system is the part that's undergoing the change. So if you have an exothermic process, all right, so you're holding a beaker in your hand, it feels hot if it's exothermic. What does that really mean? Well, what that means is that the energy from the system is being transferred to the surroundings. Well, it just so happens that your hand is part of the surroundings, along with the beaker and the water and the air. So the energy is moving uh, from the system to the surroundings, and that's what we call exothermic. Now, what if you put a thermometer in an exothermic reaction? Well, the energy is going to the surroundings, so the kinetic energy of the surroundings is going up, which we know relates to an increase in temperature. All right, so this system is, is giving off energy. The surroundings are absorbing energy. <clears throat> So the end result is an increase in temperature. Endothermic reaction is the opposite. Now, if you put your hand on a beaker where there's an endothermic reaction going on, it's actually going to feel cold. What does that really mean? Well, the energy from your hand is being transferred into the system, along with the energy from the other parts of the system, such as the water and the beaker and the air. So those, water, those molecules that are undergoing the change are sucking energy out of the surroundings. Um, so that's what we define as an endothermic process. If you put a thermometer in an endothermic reaction, yep, you guessed it, temperature is going down because the surroundings are getting colder. So how does that translate to kinetic energy? Well, if the surroundings are getting colder, that means the kinetic energy is decreasing from the surroundings, increasing in the system itself. All right. So here's an example. What if you have an ice cube and you're holding it in your hands? First thing I want you to do is think about what is the system in this case and what are the surroundings? And then I want you to tell me if this is an endothermic or an exothermic pro process. So, well, in this case, the system, yes, you already guessed it, is the ice uh, in the ice cube. The water molecules in the ice cube itself is the system. The surroundings, well, your hand, the air, those are part of the surroundings. Now, it feels cold, so therefore it's an endothermic process. The energy from your hand is being absorbed by the water molecules in the ice cube, and that's what's causing it to melt. All right, that's the end of our movie today.
it's an endothermic process. Now that